Here's why the Toronto Raptors are about to take off. I'm looking very wrong about Pascal Siakam after uploading and then deleting this video saying the Raptors should put Siakam on the trading block. There's been a wide range of good takes and very bad takes about the Raptors throughout the three and a half year history of this channel. But I think this next one's going to hold up well. With Pascal Siakam heating up, getting his rhythm after having shoulder surgery, Fred Van Vliet leading the team in plus minus by far and having a breakout season, combined with the future ROI Scotty Barnes resembling a veteran, Toronto's about to elevate their positioning in the standings. Stay tuned to find out every reason for why I think Toronto's about to elevate and for an early prediction for the 2022 wraps. Before continuing, only 15.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Back at Scotiabank, the Raps started slow adjusting to their new environment after being on the road for 72 games in the prior season, but they've won their last two games on home soil, and after beating two top five seeds in the East in the reigning champion Bucks and the breakout Wizards, the Raps have a few more challenging games in the near future, which we'll get to later on. But now for something I was very quick to overreact to, which I can do sometimes with my favorite team. In a now deleted video titled Pascal Siakam is ruining the Toronto Raptors, I unfairly criticized Siakam and I'll be the first one to admit I was wrong to not give Siakam more time to recover before making this now deleted video. I was in an angry, pessimistic mindset about the Raps at the time based off the fact that they were 2-9 and nine with Siakam in the lineup and 6-4 and four without him, but the reason I took that video down was because it was a reactionary dumb take which of course are bound to happen from time to time, but this time my take about Siakam was just completely outlandish. I tried to say his ego had significantly increased since his rookie year and that his work ethic was lacking. That was completely short-sighted of me because Pascal was just getting used to playing with a ton of new teammates without having gone through a training camp, so I'm going to apologize for that deleted video and that dumb take that you all had to watch. Plus, Siakam was just getting comfortable with his shooting form after major surgery to his left shoulder. While his effort level in the game against Utah was something I don't regret calling him out for, the majority of that Siakam hatred video, I'll admit, featured a bogus take from a reactionary, heated Raps fan. So with that out of the way, let's focus on how Pascal's been getting his game together. Starting to find his groove in 10 of his last 11 games, Siakam scored at least 17 points, which has included two 30-point games and five 20-point outings. I was at the Raps game last night, and I could tell Spicy Peas found his rhythm as the man's finally resembling the second score he was next to Kawhi in the 2019 playoffs. Maybe the shoulder Siakam just had surgery on was a ligament he needed to have operated on for a while. Last night against Washington, Siakam was working off beautifully drawn up flex actions from Nick Nurse and creating offense smoothly in ISO situations, saucing up any wizard defender put in front of him. Pascal was perfectly picking his spots. He only attempted one three, which I love, and he knocked it down easily. Mostly though, Siakam was nicely mixing up attacks to the basket with spicy in-between pull-ups. To me, he's got to get to the basket as much as he can with his wingspan and skill. Siakam's been building up chemistry with the current Rookie of the Year favorite Scotty Barnes, who we'll break down next. He was a headliner in a ton of videos I made over this past summer, and Scotty B's been living up to the hype that he drew in after being selected fourth overall by Masai Ujiri and the Toronto Raptors' savvy front office. Everything about Mr. Barnes resembles a veteran player, despite the fact that he's gotten just over a quarter of one NBA season in playing experience. I had a lot of belief in the talent that Barnes would ultimately develop into, but I have to admit, the poise off the dribble and playmaking in which Scotty operates with has completely stunned me. The man's an elusive perimeter shot creator already, he has veteran-esque post moves and fundamentally sound pull-up shooting mechanics. Imagine how special this kid's going to be after going through a full season or two in the pros and potentially getting his feet wet in the postseason. On the court, with the example he sets with his focus and intensity, and off the court with his easygoing, very cool personality, even though he's a rook, Barnes is wise beyond his years and has already established himself as one of this team's most valuable leaders. Scotty has his rookie moments for sure, where he's caught looking inexperienced, but it's those times where you remember, this kid's just 20 years old, 
and you realize how much improving there is to go for him. That potential progression from Barnes, which I could break down in a separate video, is scary, considering how good the man already is for the time being. Barnes is posting averages of 15 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists per game after 24 outings, and he's currently leading a two-way race between he and Cavalier big man Evan Mobley for the Rookie of the Year trophy. Barnes has been a starter since day one, and he's electrifying to watch with his long strides in the open court, no-look passes in transition, and posterizing dunks. The 6'9 wing struggled with his three-point shot early, but he started to find his range from deep, knocking down 10 three-pointers in the last four games. Barnes has already recorded three double-doubles, and he's 10th overall in offensive rebounds with 63 so far this season. He's averaging over 35 minutes per game, which is 13th most in the NBA, and he's shooting 49% from the field. Speaking on the Rookie of the Year trophy, Barnes told Yahoo Sports last month, it's definitely a goal of mine for sure, and something I would love to achieve. But right now, I'm just trying to play basketball, win games, and do whatever I can to contribute to this team when I'm on the court. Scotty's proven early that he's going to be a staple in the Raptor organization for the next decade plus, and that he can steadily grow into the face of the franchise. One of the faces of the franchise for now is Fred Van Vliet, who's put the Raptors on his back in the early going. The one game he missed, I was also in attendance for against the Detroit Pistons, and the Raptors couldn't hold their own without him, even against a bottom-feeding team. Fred's ability to dribble around the court like the Harlem Globetrotter version of Steve Nash creates the majority of opportunities that Toronto's offense manufactures throughout the course of a game. Fred Flintstone is currently plus 32 ahead of any other Toronto Raptor in plus minus at plus 56. The next highest player is Utah Watanabe at plus 24. This has quietly been a breakout first quarter of the year for Freddy, as he's averaging a career best 20 points, while also shooting a career high 44% from the field. It's just felt right watching Van Vliet take control of the wheel from Lowry as the team's main point guard this year, and so far, he's perfectly carried on the legendary legacy that Kyle carved out in a Raps uniform. Fred was a big part of the Raptors' championship run two and a half years ago, and now his motivation is to fuel the organization back to the postseason and get the young Raps core some playoff experience. Delano Banton was talked about in my Raps video last month, and he's another rookie heavily counted on in the Raptors' system. Given Masai Ujiri's ability to select stellar talent deep in the draft and the young talent and star caliber veterans that are currently in place, the Raps don't need to tank for the lottery. The front office has proved in the past that it can rebuild on the fly. Overall, there's still a ton of weaknesses with this Raps team. They desperately need Kem Birch back as the squad ranks last in defensive rebounds per game, their offense in the half court lacks variety, which is why they push it in transition so wildly at times, but the flow in the half court looked much better in their last outing versus the fifth seeded Wizards. Nick Nurse finally got some practice time with his team after a ton of road games to start the year, and it seems the Raps have taken advantage of that. But another reason why I think the Raps are about to have some big time success is because in terms of shot creation and defense, Toronto's top three options for the time being without OG, and Van Vliet, Siakam, and Barnes can bring those two qualities to the table. As I mentioned, Barnes can create surprisingly well off the dribble, Siakam's going on a scoring tear, and Fred can carve through defensive game plans by either setting up his teammates or craftily scoring himself. Toronto took care of the number 5 seeded Wizards in wire-to-wire -wire fashion, and that's why I think with teams like New York, Brooklyn, Chicago twice, and Golden State coming up, the Raps can hold their own and pull out a few W's in those games. But in addition to those outings, the Raps have some winnable nights coming up, facing OKC, Sacktown, Orlando, and the banged up Sixers, all within the next few weeks. There's going to be some growing pains, and I'm not expecting the Raps to win every one of those outings, but I think they're finally developing some winning habits from what I saw last night and the last game, and two wins over two top five seeds in their last two games should give them some momentum, but 
We'll see what happens, of course. For next video shoutout, what's most exciting about the Toronto Raptors? The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Evodaga, who says, Memphis really got a squad. I knew Desmond Bain was going to be great from his time in TSU, but he's been fantastic for Memphis. Pause to read the rest of Ona's take. Thanks for every amazing answer. Hope all of you watching have a great one. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.